Good morning. So we're going to switch gears a little bit. I know that was a really heavy topic, digital and cybersecurity. Hopefully this will feel a little bit lighter. I'm hoping everyone has had their coffee, their tea, um, and feels awake because we are going to interact a little bit this morning if that is okay with everyone. Um, and um, as was shared, I'm actually with Ohio Health, which is a healthcare corporation um, alum and board member at the university, which is how um, we were able to hear from Todd this morning. I hope you guys thought he was fantastic. I learned a lot listening to him. So we're gonna talk a little bit about social media and how we can use that from a brand perspective. So our agenda, our time today, here is what we are going to go through for those of you who enjoy a roadmap. As I've warned you, our, there is audience participation ahead. I do plan to undock this microphone and walk around a little bit um, and hear from some of you. Um, so we're going to talk about how brands use social media. It's very different from how we as individuals use social media. We're going to talk about on which of those social channels do brands post and promote content and why? We're going to talk a, look a little bit closer about the audiences by channel because the audiences are different um, based on your objectives and who you're trying to reach. Um, we're going to talk about content development. How do you decide how to curate, how to create, what do people want to hear about that is valuable um, to them? We are going to talk about what people are talking about on social media. Um, look a little bit at things that are a little bit tangential to those social media platforms, which is online reviews and brand journalism. So how do brands use social media? So I want to level set, and if you need to like close your eyes or blink a couple times to think and get this part out of your brain, I encourage you to do so. So the purpose of Today's session, again, is to talk about the brand implication. So acknowledge right now your own personal thoughts about social media and how you use it in your personal life, whether that is puppies and babies and grandchildren, or maybe more recently, the weaponization of misinformation and the sharing of content over and over for, for an unhealthy purpose. Um, because that exists, we know that exists, we know people have very personal feelings about, um, I love Instagram, but I hate Facebook, and they're very emotionally driven feelings about them. So there is a strategy to use these, these applications and these platforms to harness it for business use. There's also the personal user experience. So just allow yourself to feel what you feel about social media and then put it away because we're gonna talk about it for brand. So let's go through this list, and I want to see who uses what platform, just so we can see what um, biases, good or bad, we might have in the audience for each platform. So I'm going to go left to right, top to bottom. Facebook. Who has Facebook? Who uses Facebook? Whose companies use Facebook? Twitter. Who uses Twitter for themselves? A little bit. Who uses Twitter for their business. Couple, okay. Uh, LinkedIn, who has a personal LinkedIn? Whose companies have a personal LinkedIn? Several, okay. So fa Facebook seems popular, um, LinkedIn seems popular. Who uses Pinterest for all the DIY projects and recipes and, and things like that? Who, whose company has a Pinterest? Very good, somebody's company has a Pinterest. Snapchat, this skew's a little younger. Who uses Snapchat? Okay, anybody's company use Snapchat? Nobody. Um, TikTok, do you guys recognize that that's TikTok? Who has a TikTok? You can be honest. Who, who does it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your children, and keeping tabs on your children also counts. Um, businesses, anybody's business have a TikTok? So my business has a TikTok. We can talk about that a little bit more, how we use that in, in a healthcare space, but we're a service-based industry, and we can talk about how that translates. Instagram, who's got the gram? Anybody's business use the gram? Okay, pretty equal. Um, YouTube. YouTube is somewhat the, the 
original social media. Businesses use YouTube, I imagine quite a few. Uh, who knows what that last one is? Somebody shout it out if you know what it is. That is next door. That's next door. Who has next door? I've got a social media super user right here who has raised his hand for just about everything in the third row. Um, so <laughs> whose business uses next door? This is an emerging space for, pe for businesses to consider from a social media point of view when a lot of the other platforms have started to get really saturated and people have become more cynical of the advertising. Next door is kind of the, the net, next it thing in terms of social media brand communication. So let's ground ourselves in a little bit of research. Um, this is my only research today. I am not a PhD professor. I'm a, I'm a business practitioner. So Todd had some um, really awesome statistics and I had statistics envy watching him go through his slides. Um, but this is all you'll get from me from statistics. I just want to ground us in who is using social media. Um, if anyone thinks, oh, it's not really that many people or it's only kids. 82% of Americans under the age of 50 use at least one social media site. Um, the top way professionals reach audiences on social media um, is, is Facebook and groups and subreddits. Anybody a Reddit person? We didn't talk about Reddit much. Yeah, I'm a big Reddit. I'm a big Reddit person also. 84% um, of professionals who work in this space target millennials in social media strategy followed by Gen X and Gen Z. Only 14% are targeting baby boomers. So I'm sorry if baby boomers are in the audience, you are not the target market for, for this individual. So let's, let's do a quick quiz, because I always like to see, uh, we have preconceived notions about generation ages. So how, um, anybody want to take a guess how old millennials are right now? Millennials been a kind of a dirty word for a long time. 30s, 30s is fair, 30s is fair. So the elder millennial is 41. I know, I saw the jaw drop. The elder millennial is 41, so we can no longer call them children, I think, right? We can't call them children anymore. They're 26 to 41. Um, Gen Z, we talk about, is now at 22% in terms of targeting because the elder Gen Z is 25. The elder Gen Z is probably out of college, maybe out of grad school maybe married, maybe making different life choices that you might be making by your mid-20s. Um, anybody want to guess Gen X? 53, okay. That sounds very specific, like that might resonate with someone. 45, 55, yep. So Gen X um, is 42 to 57. So I just like to use that to ground us because I think um, Gen Z is getting the heat now, but for a long time, the millennials, right? Millennial was, was thrown around like, oh, the millennials. And, and they make up more of the workforce, right? Everybody under the age of 40 is starting to make up more of the workforce. So goals with social media. Gen Z was, what is the lower age of Gen Z? The lower age on Gen Z, they are still very young. Gen Z is 10 to 25 years old. So you're talking middle school to out of college is really your Gen Z spot. The, um, anybody have kids or grandkids under the age of 10? Okay. That's, we're now in a new alphabet. That's, that's Gen Alpha. We'll see if they stick with that naming convention and use the Greek alphabet, but we're the under tenors are our Gen Alpha. We don't know enough about them. We're not researching them and targeting them much yet unless you're on Disney Plus. So goals within social media and within these social platforms, um, build awareness and engagement um, with current and future clients, could be members if it's, a, if it's an organization like the Society, um, and communities. Highlight expertise, and we'll talk a lot more about how you can highlight your expertise through thought leadership by sharing relevant content. Empower your members or your employees to be brand ambassadors via content sharing, right? If, if you think of the, 
talk about this, I think, a little bit more, but you think the brand ambassador is today's version of the word of mouth. The who did you hear it from? Why well, heard it from a friend? Um, continue to explore and involve current and future social channels. So when we think about social, we think about it really in two streams, organic social and paid social. Um, many of these platforms have a place for both. So organic social is really simple. It's really accessible for all audiences. And most importantly, as, as Todd was talking earlier in his presentation about free things that you have, free things you can do, organic social is free. Um, so this is where people go when they want to engage with social media, when they want to know something, they want to go or they want to do something. So I, I was talking to some folks last night and I likened this to the white and yellow pages of today, um, combined with maybe your morning news. This is where people know if they want to know if their Starbucks is open yet, if the food truck, where's the food truck going to be this weekend, where, um, what are new products coming out that I am interested in, whether it's a retail or a business to business, they go to social media because it can be quickly updated for free. Um, you're watching a lot of startups and a lot of more nimble organizations and very small organizations. Some are going away from traditional websites that take coders and developers and they're going to, I have a LinkedIn page, I have a, a Facebook group because those can be uh, managed and they can be updated in two minutes. Paid social. So paid social is kind of like it sounds, you pay money for it. Um, this is your targeted advertising. You can advertise on all of, all of the social media platforms, really. Um, and these are targeted. I know that I am trying to garner the attention of a 45 to 55 year old male with children, etc. You can build your profiles out and target certain people. And we're gonna dive into each of these a little bit more. And I do have time, I've got some audience participation coming soon, and then some time at the end for questions. So Facebook. Uh, Facebook is the, is the one that catches all the heat um, as far as what people think about it. Do they love it, do they hate it? Um, but it is the most popular. It's the most widely used. It is the most popular. Its numbers are still growing despite all the new platforms like Nextdoor and TikTok and, and things that are, are growing out there. It's evolving. It's evolving away from a space where people use it for personal means and is becoming a little bit more of a brand targeting um, channel. People use Facebook from a branding standpoint for community engagement, um, to demonstrate the culture of their organization for customer and member experience and then for campaign support if you've got a, a product launch or a, a line that you are are promoting so I've got some examples here um, I hope you can see them from where that where you're sitting but we'll talk through them I picked some of my um, favorites I just did a quick search on each of the sites this week and picked out content that some brands have shown this week so this is New Balance New Balance in the last couple of weeks has shared three different ads that speak to three different ways that brands can use. The first one with the pair of tennis shoes is, is touting their, their gray tennis shoes, right? Gray tennis shoes go with everything. Um, they are touting a product. The second is, is, it says, if you guys can read it, it says, if not, now, when? And it is taking a stand from a culture standpoint about culture, about climate support. So they're talking about their commitment to environmental issues. The third is, is alignment. The third is brand strategy alignment. And this is really my, my bench strength. Um, this is a Olympic athlete who wears the New Balance product. So this is alignment with a brand that is a tactical amplifier for them, right? Like if my favorite Olympic athlete wears New Balance, Maybe I would like New Balance too. It also showcases their support, which goes back to culture of things like the Olympics. So things you can share organically on Facebook. Blog posts, if your organization has a blog. Newsroom articles, if your organization has a technical newsroom. 
um, events that are happening, whether they're organization events or they are sponsorship events that you're affiliated with in the community that you are engaged with, calendar events, um, Facebook Lives, we'll talk a little bit more about those in a, in a while, photos and videos, I mean, um, you'll see a theme as you look through most of these slides. Every post on most of these sites is accompanied with a video or an image because it's what catches your eye. So photos and videos, trending cop topics, and then we already talked about campaign support materials. Twitter. So Twitter is really a strong player in the partnership space. If you guys think about um, partners, and you can think about that in any way. It could be a community initiative you support. It could be a business to business partner that you have. It could be an alliance that you have. Um, brands often will see a heavier amount of tags which is when company A has tagged company B and it shows up in the search results. Um, with upcoming conferences, industry news, um, news stations, it, this is a channel though, the caution with this channel, I love Twitter, the caution with this channel is this needs very closely monitored because it is, it is real time, it happens at warp speed and you can get tagged in responses all the time. So it's very, um, very quick. So my um, example here is NASA has a few things that they're talking about. So I tried to pick a few things so that hopefully something resonates with each of you, whether it's a, whether you're in a product industry and you've got a product that you're selling, whether you're a, an organization like a NASA or later on you'll see, um, I think even some society and membership organization work. So NASA is one of the things we've got on here is customer experience, brand reputation. NASA is talking in one example about careers at NASA. It's a great recruitment tool. They're talking about um, their kind of state of the state, state of NASA address and how you can watch the state of NASA. And then they're also talking about um, people who grow up and want to be astronauts and work in space sciences. Next we have Instagram. So Instagram has different types of content. You can you probably, show hands again, who's on Instagram. Probably familiar with the fact that they've got stories. Stories show up for 24 hours. There's a little circle with your face on them at the top and then they disappear after 24 hours and never to be seen again. And then they have content that shows up in your feed, which is what you see here with the little highly um, curated boxes that all match and look very aesthetically pleasing. This is the National Park Service. This is one of my favorites to follow because it's just beautiful and makes you think of, gosh, I should go on a vacation to an outdoor destination. I need to go to Yellowstone. I need to go to an outdoor destination. Um, the, the, the interesting part about Instagram, and this is one where it's used a lot more for personal or a lot more for businesses with heavy content visualization. So heavy, so you think of the park service, right? What is, what is more gorgeous than mother nature? They've got a lot of content that they can share that's photo driven and video driven. So if your brand isn't very visually driven, it's something to consider. Does this make sense for me or not for Instagram? Another thing that Instagram has yet to change, although we're eternally optimistic is that in order to include links, that would drive to your company's website, would drive to a um, news report, anything you want to drive to, you have to have a minimum of 10,000 followers. For a lot of organizations, 10,000 followers is a lot. We are not all a Kardashian. LinkedIn, so this is my favorite to talk about when it comes to business to business. This is kind of the, if you want to start somewhere, probably want to start on LinkedIn. It is the business to business site. It is about community, um, organizational news, recruitment for employees, and thought leadership. So thought leadership is, is really where you go as a leader in your organization, as a subject matter expert, as an SME, to share news about your organization that demonstrates your culture, aids in recruitment, helps people understand why you your organization or your leadership are a leading expert in that space. And we talk within our organization about getting a lot of our senior leaders to, to write pieces to share on there, to really get our message out there and our culture 
about who we are and what we know. And of course, in our world, it's it's healthcare, right? So it's physicians. Um, in Todd's world, it's academia. In your world, it may be something else that you're an expert and can contribute information to. So this is the audience participation time. I hope you are you're good on hearing my voice for a little bit because I'm going to walk around. So looking at competitors, looking at your own brands, um, looking at other brands, what's out there that you like? And then I'm going to eventually ask the question, what's out there that you don't like? Uh, I've been using LinkedIn uh, for four years. I've just started a business uh, uh, as well on uh, uh, business posting and the business side. One of the things I've seen on LinkedIn, and I can, I can only talk about LinkedIn, is that in the last probably year, year and a half, I, I'm not on Facebook, but it's becoming a little bit like Facebook. I'm not sure whether you, what's, what, do you, what is your take on that. Is it, uh, it, it's become more personal. I mean, I enjoy personal, but I don't, because it's, to me, it's, it's, it's a business side where I want to share mm -hmm. my business ideas and I want to hear about other people. It's a fantastic insight, and if you're in the back and you can't hear what was shared, um, there's an observation that on LinkedIn, more recently, it's become a lot more personal. And it hasn't been as much about business, and it is spot on, and there's a lot of debate about what has LinkedIn become? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Um, what you're really seeing play out there is what's happening culturally in the United States with the, with the bring your whole self to work mentality, um, with the work-life balance mentality, and with the results of what we've all been through as a result of the pandemic and people working from different environments. Um, and so you, you do see a lot of, hey, it starts out, hey, I never share personal stuff on here, but, and then, then it gets into typically some sort of empowered um, sharing. So um, there's a place for it. There is a time when it makes sense. I think one of the things that is um, really popular right now in LinkedIn is using that as a recruitment tool. I don't know in your industries if you're seeing a lot of um, people interested in in promoting their personal brand to get out there and maybe get recruited and, and go on to the next phase of their working career. Um, here's the good news with LinkedIn. You can curate your feed to filter some of that out if you don't see it, but it is changing. LinkedIn's changing. So here's the upside. If all that sounded kind of like, yuck, I don't want the personal stuff on my, on my LinkedIn, the upside is people are using it. It's a really popular place to be. The metrics for usage on LinkedIn, LinkedIn in the past 18 months are going up, up, up. So as a business, as a personal user, you may think, I just don't want to see this. Um, I want this to be about business. As a brand, there's an opportunity to cash in on, which is people are on here and they're active and they're, they're doom scrolling. You guys know what doom scrolling is? We've all doom scrolled. If you don't know what it is, it's when you find yourself mindlessly sitting on the couch, laying in bed, waiting on a plane, and you are just endlessly scrolling content or you're pulling down so it can refresh so you can see Oh, did I miss anything in the last 17 minutes? I've been zoned out staring at my phone. So if that, I see some laughter that maybe doom scrolling resonates with, with some people. I am very guilty of doom scrolling. But that's the thing, right? People are doom scrolling. They're consuming the content. And so if they're consuming the content, it could be a really great opportunity for your organization to be part of that conversation and figure out where you fit in. It's a great insight. Who else has an insight or something they like or don't like? Or a brand they love to follow? Yes. I know that my digital marketing company is telling me the video now is the content that you have to have up there. It's color versus black and white. You know, you'll get way better rankings, way more attention with any video. So having a YouTube page, whenever you can take a video, Running, you get a new machine, whatever it could be, get some video content, whether it's on your 
website, social media, your YouTube? So the great news is your, your digital marketing team is right. They're giving you good advice. Um, it, it's video. Video is king. Static image is great too. Photo images, video is even better. Each platform has recommended length. Typically, um, the longer YouTube is, is housing for more in depth, longer videos. Um, you can put videos up to a minute long on Facebook. You can put longer videos on there. Just you've got an abandonment rate issue where people aren't going to watch. Um, that's what they want to watch. And here's the good news for small businesses, small mid sized businesses the production value doesn't have to be there anymore, right? When you take, when you think about videos, a lot of us think about videos 10 years ago where there has to be a really high quality production. You paid a lot of money for this video. It took a lot of time. It took a few thousand dollars. It took endless meetings to get to this finished product. By the time you have the finished product, it might even be obsolete, the video, right? because you're six months down the road. It, we just call it quick and dirty content. You, you can take the content on your phone, you can take it on your iPad, you can get a, a video production device, and there's a value, there's absolutely a value in having a high quality production video. There's a time and place for it. But social media, just like we talked about it being the yellow and white pages, like Facebook, where it's quickly accessible and quickly nimble, you can do that with your video as well and make it super quick, super easy, and doesn't at all have to be polished. That's another fantastic insight. So any other insights, personal brands you love to follow? I just, I add to the YouTube, you know, comments you just made that um, we're all carrying around cell phones now that are so darn good, you know, that like, the kind of thing that we saw in the past, you know, it was pretty choppy, maybe it wasn't great, but now, I mean, you can take fantastic videos with just your cell phone and put them and they look great. Yeah, everyone every day is walking around with a computer in their pocket with videography machine. And I know we have videographers in the room too, right? But there is a time and place for the professionals. Um, but there is an opportunity for that never ending news cycle of social media to capture it, post it, move on. Any other insights? These are all great. I'll reinforce the LinkedIn comments. Um, I don't really participate personally in any of the other sites. I always participated in LinkedIn because I saw it as a, a business resource and a way to learn about businesses and a lot of more about me. Um, but I do also agree that I see more and more personal stuff posted in my feed and uh, even stuff that's political, which I think is totally inappropriate, right? Um, it shouldn't be a place like that. It is kind of becoming like a Facebook in a way, uh, but a Facebook for business. Yeah, it, it, LinkedIn has a kind of a, a value proposition dilemma. What are they going to be? Yeah. yeah. What are they going to be um, in this next evolution of bring your whole self to work when everyone is sharing um, more personal updates with the, with the business slant to it, right? I mean, we've all seen, I, maybe this just might be my followers on Facebook, but we all see the, the maternity leave posts and the um, time off posts and things like that. So I'm seeing it too. Anybody else have a, a different thought? Anybody like to see the more personal side of their professionals in their LinkedIn community? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe those. I don't know about necessarily on LinkedIn, but you know, I think on Facebook too, it's, it's nice, but it's not always about the business. But you can post some personal things about the employees and the staff, or just hey, you know, it, it, it's a great day, and you know, not always you focus on the business. I think that's sometimes a nice break. That's a fantastic insight. So you go ahead. To me, that's a business or major thing. When we're talking about personal, it is, hey, I'm going for a walk with my dog, or, you know, like stuff like that. And, you know, and, and my social media person has said, you, know, you should be with your dog, and, you know, show, you'll be surprised how many likes you get and how many views you get. 
Uh, I think anything to do with business is, is understandable. You know, talking about your employees, that's part of business. Talking about uh, the product or, you know, I saw a couple of people post that we are going to be speaking here uh, at their CD. So uh, that's good. That's all great. But pure personal, personal. Or the other thing which I'm noticing now on LinkedIn is as well, like this post and make, give me a million, give, give me a million views. <laughs> you know? So, the visibility it's seekers. Yeah, it's all about the likes. It's all about the likes, right? Yeah. It's the whole um, pics or it didn't happen. If we don't post a picture of walking our dog, it didn't happen. You didn't walk your dog. Um, I love the insight about the culture piece from a business perspective, showcasing that on LinkedIn, talking, highlighting, spotlighting your employees, spotlighting your ambassadors, showcasing your your culture because LinkedIn is a very powerful recruitment tool. And it is much more powerful when you are organically telling those stories about your employees and not just posting your job openings, which someone can find on Glassdoor or Indeed or wherever else they go, go to find those things. Um, let's hear from someone. There were quite a few people who raised their hands and said, yeah, my company does one of these things. What, what kinds of things are your organizations using it, using social media for that you like? Todd, go ahead. Thank you for sharing, absolutely. So these all things all have actual business implication. They help with awareness, they help with visibility, they help with likelihood or intent to partner with because it increases the likelihood that they're top of mind. So when you talk about aided versus unaided recall and, and I'm trying to think about, I need a company to partner with to do X and there's a concept in marketing that you have to see something seven to nine times before it sticks. So repetition's key. You're, you're a player in one of these social media spaces and you constantly are coming up and then someone needs you, needs to access you, or go back to no, go, or do. They need to no, go, or do. They're, it's, it's in there. They're gonna come up with, I saw your company talking about its employees and I can go find you. I know how to find you because I saw you on LinkedIn. So it, ha it has actual downstream revenue value and, and share the market value when you think about a little bit of a longer term strategy and getting to your customers at the top of the acquisition funnel, up at the top of be aware of us when you need us, part of the funnel. Go ahead. Can you maybe talk a little about the uh, newer feature on Instagram? You talked about you know, your content's up there for 24 hours. Um, my graphic designer does my social media and I don't know much about it. They handle it all, they run stuff by me, but they have those new, you, you make a little circle, right? You have to first post up into your story, but now you can put it in a directory that it stays there forever. And you can really organize your content and divide it out with these little headers, right? You sure can. I believe they call it moments. Yes. I believe. Yeah, so if you're on your Instagram, if you have your app, this is the one um, talk where you're probably going to be encouraged to go ahead and get your phone out and look at it if you want to so you can follow along but if you're on your Instagram app up at the top you got your circle which is your face whatever your profile picture is and then you've got your feed which is the grid we're past that point but the grid lines that we saw and then you can add there's a plus and you can add these moments and you can curate stories you can curate content you can curate a a circle a moment that talks about who we are, what's our story as a brand. We can, we can curate moments that talk about who our people are. What do we value? 
what do we offer? What are, what do we do within? What are we service are we providing? What product are we providing? And you can curate those, and that's a it's a fantastic point. That is a way to make those twenty four hour story reels live in perpetuity, and you can add and edit and and remove those as you see fit. A lot of brands will do that with content like Facebook Lives, and we're going to move on to that here in a minute. Um, um, they will do that and they will do what, what really we just call maximizing the content. Do it once and break it out into all these channels so that you don't have repeated, um, repeated effort for, for lower results. So how do you find content? Thank you guys for participating. I appreciate it. That was a great discussion and great insight. Um, how do you find content? So we look at trending topics. We look at, I mean, the classic brainstorm, right? Get around the table with the whiteboard and talk about what's what's going on within your industry. Where's the intersection of what's trending and what do you, what message do you want to get out there as an organization? What special events, initiatives, projects do you have? What are your business partners? Do you have business partners inside and outside the organization? Um, there's always an interesting conversation about. Um, so I'll give you an example. You know, I work in healthcare, and there is always what our docs want us to talk about. Right, our docs want us to talk about a new knee technology or a new hip product or a new MRI. And, I, and most of us don't, don't care. We don't want to hear about that. We want to hear about how to access services. I have knee pain, what do I do? Not a necessarily a robotic procedure or a multi-million dollar piece of equipment. So it's having the, those conversations about what do I want to get across as an organization and how can I do that in a way that people who are consuming the content want to hear about it? So types of content you can create. Blog articles, um, I want to be sensitive to our time here. Um, are we 11? Keep going. Okay. Okay. Um, blog articles, um, news articles, Facebook Lives, paid and organic. We talk about paid and organic campaigns. Um, sponsorship opportunities, partnership opportunities, alignments, um, employee-generated content. We had some great discussion over here about employee-generated content and lifting up the people that work for us. Um, Facebook Live. Who's done a Facebook Live? Anybody? So we did a lot of Facebook Lives um, in throughout the pandemic, right? This is actually an example from, from my work that I worked on. Social digital marketing. So this is, is paid campaigns. So you, you, the gentleman in the back talked about this a little bit, but you generally have a creative partner or an internal team to help you develop a marketing campaign and use your goals and objectives. And this is where you can target. This is where you wonder why you just thought about buying a pair of hiking boots and all of a sudden in your Facebook feed, all, every outfitter and every hiking boot is starting to show up because there are algorithms saying, well, you, you, looked up REI, so now we think you probably want to do something outdoors. We know you follow, we, we know you follow the National Park Service. We know you looked up REI. We knew you hopped on Southwest and looked at flight sales. We're starting to piece together where you are in that target market demographic, and that's where organizations that have budgets that allow them to market can get really into some of that. Social listening is a good part of it. And how are we on time? What are we? 11 o'clock? Okay. We're going over. I'm going to wrap it up real quick. And then we can, I can talk at any point after this if you want to talk. Social listening is great. Airlines do social listening really well. Everybody complains about their flight being late, their favorite beverage not being available, and they mean tweet it out on Twitter and instantly Southwest, United, whoever the airline is, replies and remedies the issue. So something to think about in Twitter, we talked about that has to be your most monitored. People go on Twitter to complain. They do other things too, but they go on Twitter to complain and your, your time to respond to them is very quick. More about social listening. So what you can't see in social listening, you can't see private stuff. You can't see conversations in private groups. You can't see posts that have your brand as a keyword um, necessarily, but you can see and you should respond to if you're engaged in this, this realm, posts that you're tagged in. Um, this is again some Southwest examples of posts that you're tagged in. Someone was very upset there was no Bailey's Irish cream 
on their flight and their flight attendant told them that they never carried Billy's Irish cream and he knew that was a lie because he'd been flying Southwest for 17 years and that was his go-to drink. Many of us have our go-to, if it's cranberry juice or what it is, we have our go-to on-flight drink. Um, you can't, uh, what you can also respond to, questions, comments, private messages on your brand's social inbox. So it's a really great way to engage with your customers. I'm gonna wrap it up. Brand journalism. So brand journalism is really about creating content that engages with people. Typically this lives on your website or some other housed mechanism. Could be a YouTube, if it's a longer format video. And it's conversations about your core business that typically build trust, demonstrate your expertise, demonstrate your values, persuade you to partner with them. Do we have time for questions? Or do we do those offline? Okay, we don't have time for questions. We did such a great job. Todd might have a question. Oh, I, I have a comment. Okay. Thank you guys, this was great. We spent a lot of time with discussion. I really appreciate that.